Guiding a 500 kilo machine through kilometers of chaos is no easy exercise. This is Lima, Peru, a city where car drivers wouldn't dare take their eyes off the road. Motorcyclists have to be even more alert. On these streets, driving is combat. It takes nerves to win. Traffic lights are ignored, and no one reads a word on the sign. Lily Campos patrols downtown Lima on a Harley Davidson. She rides past rotting houses and steers clear of knee-deep potholes, riding a bike that weighs 10 times as much as she does. She's a 50 kilo cop battling the heaviest traffic. Today Lily is rolling towards the Beach Boulevard where she'll chase reckless drivers, drivers talking on cell phones and drivers who aren't wearing seat belts. When she gets to the beach, Lily shows she was born to ride. Her first victim, the driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt. It might seem like a minor offense, but for Lily, it's a serious problem. She follows her routine, checking the driver's license and registration, and checking the driver's identity. For this driver, the fine is serious too. 75 solas, about 20 euros, and it has to be paid in seven days. Usually drivers who break the rules can get away much cheaper in Peru, but not if they meet Lily Campos. You can't corrupt women in Peru. Why not? Because we are very strict and just don't accept that. Sure, there have been cases from time to time. Colleagues of mine have been offered money, but they immediately arrested the person and took him to the next police station. In Peru, it doesn't usually work that way. Police in this country have a bad name. They're easily corrupted. Five or ten solas is enough to bribe your way out of a ticket. For the low-paid police officers, it's extra money. For the traffic offenders, it's an easy way out. But thanks to officers like Lily, getting away with it is about to get much harder. Four years ago, Peruvian police created a special force called the Phoenix Brigade. Its mission is controlling traffic, and it's made up entirely of young women riding Harleys. Drivers fear the Phoenix officers, who are amongst the few police that don't take bribes. The women are considered incorruptible, and they work hard to keep their reputation. The brigade with the mythical name is based in a worn down part of the city, an industrial neighborhood in South Lima. Like their Greek namesake, the Phoenix officers are dedicated to rising from the ashes of corruption, becoming shining examples for the rest of the force. At headquarters, the way the bosses see it, female officers aren't as corruptible as the men. The women also haven't been around as long. Fresh from the police academy, they haven't picked up the same bad habits as their veteran male colleagues. The working hours of the Phoenix women are quite long. It's afternoon in Lima and Samantha Alban and her colleague Eliana Falcon leave their unit for the second time today. They know what's ahead. Bad roads, bad neighborhoods, very bad drivers. Some of the worst drivers drive buses and they don't like being stopped by women. They rarely admit they've done anything wrong. Samantha Alban rarely lets them get away with it. This is a job that requires a strong character. There are drivers who, I don't know, because they lack culture or because they're ignorant, they come after us. They wait for us when we leave, when we finish working. They see opportunities. They want to push us around. They've threatened a lot of our colleagues. 
nos quieren atropellar e incluso ya han, han atropellado a muchas de nuestras compañeras. The Phoenix Brigade considers itself a family. The truth is, it's hard to have a family life outside of the unit. Typically works 16 hour days. After her lunch break, Lily Campos joins her colleagues on the Phoenix sports team. It's a typical day for the young woman. In the morning, she's on her bike. At noon, she plays volleyball. In the evening, she's back on the bike. We know when the women can give more and when they can't. So a communication exists. After having worked very hard, their legs aren't allowed to do a lot of work. This is resistance work. To so displace weight from the legs. For Lily, taking a sports break is a welcome change of pace. The game takes her far away from the streets of Lima. For three hours, she forgets about work. This relaxes you. We play sports to relax and take away all of the stress you have while on duty. It's not long before the sun sets. For most workers, the day's over. But Samantha Theralbin is going back to work. It's rush hour and she's been dispatched to an intersection on the outskirts of Lima. This is part of a citywide crackdown on bus and taxi drivers. The public buses, called combis, shuttle thousands of Peruvians between work and home every day. It can be a real adventure. Many drivers don't have licenses. Most do have long rap sheets filled with traffic offences. From six in the morning to ten at night, they sit there behind the wheel, behind all the other traffic. They're only paid 30 dollars a day. So when bus drivers confront the Phoenix Brigade, they've already spent most of the day being annoyed. So I don't like them so much. Friends, maybe. Sometimes, some of my colleagues have tried to bribe officers. But with the women, they don't accept it. I don't know how to bribe the women. As opposed to the men, you can bribe them. But with the women, no. It's difficult. Samantha has only been on the road for a few minutes when a driver tries to escape. But it's no use. It only takes a few seconds to catch him. The way the driver sees it, it's worth a try. The way the women see it, it's just a nice contest. They look over the bus and bring the driver to the police station, where he's arrested. It turns out he didn't have his driver's license, and he didn't want to identify himself. They seize his combi and keep the driver here. You always see drivers trying to escape. It happens with a lot of female personnel. It happens all the time. But when you have personnel on motorcycles, we can pursue them because we can't let them get away with the infractions they commit. It's now half past ten. After 16 hours of cruising, Samantha Olban is ready to park the bike. Her work for the day is done. It's a rewarding job, but the rewards don't come in cash. One month, made up of days like today, brings her a paycheck worth only $200. A Saturday at the house of Pilar Villacos. She's at home, something that happens none too often. The 34-year-old mother of two is one of the Phoenix Brigade's founders. Every other Saturday she gets the day off. She doesn't leave her much time for doing homework with her daughters. Without mum around, they've learned to take care of themselves. They even fight over whose turn it is to set the table. Both want the responsibility. Pilar has to work weekends to make up for her low wages. Her salary is her family's main source of income. And it's hard to feed a family on an officer's budget in Peru. Thankfully, she doesn't have to worry about rent. She owns the house she shares with her children and her husband, Henry. She bought it years ago while she was at the police academy. It's one less headache for the family. 
Because she works such long hours, there's plenty of stress under this roof. Pilar and Henry fight about her hours. Henry's an officer too. His schedule's far more flexible. In his free time, Henry takes care of the house. And he's not happy his wife spends much less time here than at work. When do we get to see each other? Almost never. Because, like you say, because of the job and the schedule she has, we usually see each other after midnight or 11 at night. Almost every day. Practically to sleep and nothing else. She and I, because of the jobs we have, come home tired and so we sleep. A lot of the time we'll find the other already in bed sleeping. And when it's time for vacations, we try to spend that time with the children. The family has to make the most of the little time it has together. Weekend afternoons in the park are rare. Pilar tries to spend as much time as she can with her family. And she tries to help her children experience things that children of other officers can't enjoy. She often thinks about finding a different job or changing her post so she can spend more time with her daughters. But she loves her work almost as much as she loves them. Sometimes I think about my daughters, and the truth is, I'd like to leave for another job. But when I think about what's in my heart, my feelings for my job are such that I don't regret working there. For me, it's worthwhile. It's worth so much to be in this squadron. Because people admire you. Your family's proud of you. My friends say, oh, Pilar, it's so beautiful that you're there. Logically, they're not thinking about the consequences that one could face in the job, an accident. No, but just being there, it's the pride that one feels. And for me, well, I'll never leave my squadron. Within the brigade, there's a very strong sense of team spirit. The Phoenix women don't think of themselves as officers in just any police unit. They think of themselves as an elite force. And the Harley is the tool they use to gain the respect. But in many ways, the women are still battling for respect. At first glance, the Phoenix Brigade looks like a proud squadron of 300 women. Look a little deeper and you'll find it's commanded by nine men. Not one woman holds a position of power. Commandant Jose Fernandez is the Phoenix Brigade's commander-in-chief. He says he has no problem leaving women out of the leadership. We often play not just the role of the boss, the leader, but we also sometimes act like an older brother advising them, guiding them. We also help with aspects of their professional, personal and moral lives, because there are parts of this job that in some ways have an effect on the lives of every one of the women. The Phoenix Brigade trains at this velodrome and track with 50 degree banks. The training is acrobatic and it's part of their job. It's a physical and mental workout. They study every move closely. The smallest error can have big consequences. There's a rule on the velodrome, never use your brake. And never make a wrong move. For Lily Campos, the velodrome isn't as intimidating as it used to be. She's been on the acrobatic team for several years now. And she's never had an accident. Some people call the acrobatic suicidal. Lily calls it fun. The women don't ride their motorcycles like most riders. They have to be acrobats. Centimeters can mean the difference between life and death. Sure, there's a little fear, but it only takes a little courage and bravery to overcome that. In practice, most of the time we're practicing to get past all of that. If nothing else, you learn any person can do whatever he or she wants to do. It's not always pretty. 
One member of the Phoenix Brigade, Maria Paul Grandes, touched the brake. For her, the dust-covered velodrome became a water slide. She wasn't hurt, just bumps and bruises. But it's all in a day's work. The acrobatics are more than a show for visitors. They have a real practical value. How does it help them? Because you know that on Peru's highways we have so much congestion in general. And some roads have other problems like potholes and construction. These types of exercises show them how much power the motorcycles have and driving this type of machine in the street becomes much easier. Lily Campos puts her velodrome training to use on the streets. Lima traffic is hellish. This city might have the worst rush hour anywhere and some days it seems like only the strong will survive. If you can drive a motorcycle here, you can drive it through anything. Lily survives and she heads back to the Phoenix unit around 10 at night. And at 10 o'clock, the night is still young. Lima's nightlife starts late. Discos don't open before midnight, and they don't close before the sun comes up. Lily and her friends meet at a club called Tropico in the heart of downtown. The officers have two free weekends a month. That leaves some time for having fun. At the Tropico, there's live music almost every night. And there's always lots to do. When they're dancing, they don't look like the motorbike brigade. When they lose the uniforms, they look like any other 20-year-old Peruvians. As long as they're single, and as long as they have energy to burn, they'll be at the Tropico on the weekend. On the other side of town, Bila Viecas is getting ready for work. It's half past four in the morning. By now she's been through the routine more times than she can count. She moves quickly. She has to. The bus won't wait for her. She sets the breakfast table for her husband and daughters, packs lunches for her daughters to take to school. And every morning, the last part of her routine is kissing her daughters goodbye. She doesn't get to talk to them. I only see them sleeping when I say goodbye to them. They're almost never awake. When I come home, they're not awake either. I'm here at 11.30 or midnight. I saw them once recently when I woke up to take them to school and got to spend a whole day with them. This morning, Henry also woke up to say goodbye. After a brief kiss, Pilar runs after the bus. It's just a quarter after five in the morning and there aren't many people on the street. Most of them are men. Pilar heads to work on one of the buses she'll be watching later that day. The trip over the Pan American Highway from Pilar's house to the Phoenix unit that's almost an hour. Like many of her colleagues, Bila lives on the outskirts of Lima. In this city of seven million people, it's much cheaper to live in the suburbs. She's made it on time. It's a quarter past six and work starts straight away. Lily also made it on time. We'll never know if she ever made it to bed. The Commander-in-Chief checks out every officer's appearance. For him, it's the most important detail. The boots have to shine, the shirts have to be ironed, the hair has to fit into a net for safety reasons. The makeup has to look good, but it can't be too heavy. Few women get ready as quickly as Pilar and Lily. Neither officer has eaten breakfast yet. 
They'd rather grab an extra five minutes of sleep and then grab a quick bite with their colleagues. At 6.15, they line up in the yard at headquarters. If they arrive one minute late, they'll have to live at the unit for the next four days without going home. It's strict military drill and discipline. After roll call, they get their marching orders. Each officer patrols a different sector of the city. Pilar and Lily have to train this morning. They won't be tracing circles on their bikes. The Phoenix members have to train regularly. It keeps their skills sharp. Today, they're in a calm residential neighborhood. This is where the police put their shooting range. Once a month, Pilar and Lily go there to train for emergencies. Even though the Phoenix Brigade members are traffic police, each one carries a gun. Sometimes the job requires more than chasing drivers. Sometimes they go after robbers and thieves. Pilar explains how they're trained. First you fire three warning shots, that's three shots in the air. This warns the criminal that you're better prepared than he is, and that he could lose, he could have an unhappy ending. If the criminal knows what he's doing, then he'll probably keep on doing what he's been doing, and risk getting shot. But if he's a beginner, he'll probably freeze after the first shot, giving us an opportunity to catch him and take him to the station. The results are quite different. Pilar hit nine of ten shots. Lily hit only three. Back at the unit, it's quiet now. Almost all of the officers have gone out on their patrols. Only Samantha Alban came back. Her Harley has been losing oil, so she hands it over to Roman Rocha, the mechanic. She uses her free time to get her hair cut. The Phoenix Brigade has its own hairdressers in the barracks. The cut costs three solars, almost a dollar at Charo Kenes. Like any good hairdresser, she does more than cut hair. She counsels the officers about life and love. They're very sweet. They open up to you. They'll tell me, you cut my hair, you see how I am. I know you treat me well, because I've gotten to know them well over time, sometimes I see they're sad or something, and they start talking. They'll say, this is happening to me, what do you think I should do? I'll give them advice, and because I'm slightly older, I've had more experience with these things. They trust me and I trust them. The mechanics have their own problems to solve. It goes beyond a Harley losing oil. Some just can't be fixed anymore. Peru is a poor country and the police can't afford the replacement parts the bikes need. So the mechanics invent solutions. These are original Harleys and a new battery would cost too much. Romain Roca Science uses a small car battery which is cheaper and stronger. He knows the bikes wouldn't get fixed if it weren't for his inventions. When you have to take apart the entire motor, then yes. If we have parts, then the job is easier. Maintenance is like you'd imagine. Expensive if you use the same brand. It also depends on which parts are broken. Some are more expensive to maintain. Some of the Harleys are beyond help. 
They're laying to rest in the motorcycle cemetery in the backyard. The police don't know if they're going to get money to buy new ones. But without the Harleys, there is no Phoenix Brigade. The members try to give their Harleys lots of tender loving care, hoping the bikes will be with them for the long haul. When they're working, the Harleys are more than just a means of transport for the officers. They're a decoration. This afternoon, Pilo and Lily are patrolling the streets, hunting for drivers breaking the rules. They catch a taxi driver. He ran a red light. A clear violation. It starts like any other traffic stop. Pilo checks the papers and his identity. He's fined 75 solos, about $18.50. But that's more than he makes in an entire day. And he's not happy. He tries to flee. He hits a bus. And he hits Pilar, who had just missed getting hit by passing cars. But this pursuit ends like most. Pilar weaves her way through the traffic jam and the taxi driver gets stuck. His problems are getting worse. Pilar seizes the car's registration and orders the driver to follow her to the station. The passenger's ride is over too. They have to catch another ride. At the station, Pilar finds out this wasn't the first blemish on the taxi driver's record. There's a long list of violations attached to his car. The police seize his car, but for now they let the driver go. They'll see him in court when they sue him for putting the life of a police officer in danger. For Pilar, it wasn't that unusual a day. But days like this make it very clear to her. She's got a dangerous job. Besides being proud of myself, my daughters are proud of me. And it's a little difficult because, if you think about it, at any minute something could happen to me. I think about my daughters and nothing else. I can only pray to God that nothing bad happens to me while I stay at this dangerous job. I keep going forward because I like to serve. I like to work on a motorcycle. Working on their motorcycles, the Lima traffic police ride into battle every day to fight against bad drivers, potholes and chaos. Seems like they're fighting against all odds. But they're addicted and they're determined to win. <laughs>